Hi, my name is Stefan Chiri, and I'm the head of IT here at Minerva. In this video, I'll be doing a two-way communication between Aris Innovator and a third-party system. The system I've chosen is Jira because it's a well-known task management system. And really, we could have used any third-party system that exposes data either through an API, direct database access, or any other means. Innovator has no built-in Jira integration, so I'll be doing everything from the ground up on a fresh installation of Eris. Uh, I won't be diving very deeply into the technical aspects. Uh, this is a mostly a proof of concept to give you an impression of the, the steps that you need to go through. So what I've done is I've started by downloading the free version of Eris at eris.com support, and that'll take you to the, the download page. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create uh, the data model to keep our JIRA issues in. And um, in Innovator, that is called an item type. So we'll create a new item type, like so. We'll give it a name and a label. All right. The next thing we want to do is we want to add properties to it. So everything that we want to record about these issues will be uh, added here. So the first thing we want to do is we want the, the Jira ID, which is a string. Second thing we want is the uh, reference to the, the item itself. Now we don't want to actually display that to the user. We might need that later, so we'll just start by hiding it. The next property that we want is the, uh, the Jira key. Now for those of you familiar with Jira, we'll know that the key is what identifies the, the issue inside of Jira. Now for the rest of the properties, they will all be federated. Now, federated means that they will be transparently mapped from an external system, and in this case, from Jira. So all the rest of the properties, you'll notice that, that I'll be defining them as federated. So first of all, we have the title, the description, the issue type, and the status. All right. I'll go ahead and save that. The next thing we want to add is an icon. I'll just go ahead and choose this default icon. We'll go ahead and save that. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a user interface. And we do that by using the rebuild view action, which will add all the custom properties that we just made to a new form. What we also want to do is we want to distinguish between uh, new issues and issues that we've, we've already created. So we'll make a user interface for the case when we have a new issue. All right, so this is the interface that, will be, that the user will be presented with uh, when he's creating a new Jira issue. So what we'll do is we'll delete all the fields that are populated once the issue is already existing, meaning that we only want to display whatever the user needs to input and not show everything else. And in the same way, we want to give the user the opportunity to edit issues that have already been created. In this case, all the data from Jira will be already present, so we want to display that information to the user. All right, and we're done. So the next thing we want to do is we want to define who actually has access to these issues. So in this example, I'll just add the world identity, meaning everyone, and place it in the design category alongside parts and products. Then we want to define who can add new issues and again we will just add world meaning everyone and the same goes for permissions we'll just add the default set of permissions and leave it at that all right 
Now we're done. And if we go to the design menu, we'll see that we now have our data model ready. So there's just one thing missing, and that is the integration to Jira. And we'll do that by creating two methods. Methods are uh, custom code that's running inside of, of Innovator. The, the first method that we need is the, the method that creates the data in Jira. So we'll go ahead and add that. And as you can see, this method is written completely in C sharp, meaning that any uh, proficient C sharp developer should be able to write this, this code. Now this uh, method here is about 30 lines long, so it's um, not a huge method. The second method we'll need is the, uh, the code that's being executed once the data has already been added and when we subsequently want to edit that information. Now all we need is to link the methods that we created to the actual data model and we do that in the server events. So the first method that creates the issues in Jira will be added before add, so meaning that before the user actually adds something to the database, this method will be run, making sure that that data is also added to Jira. The subsequent method that's being run is run on the on after get, meaning that when we get the information from the, from the innovator system, we will also get it from Jira. I have already created a Jira board a planning board inside of Jira, which is empty at the moment. So now I'll just demonstrate how the integration actually works. And what should happen is when I create a new issue, if you notice, I'll be, I'm presented right now with the interface that cr we created um, for new issues. So I can type in any description that I'd like. So obviously I have nothing valuable, but just as a, demonstration. Um, when I go ahead and save this, it is no longer a new issue. It's now an existing issue. So I expect two things to happen. One is that I get the edit version of my uh, user interface. And the second is that it automatically creates the issue in Jira. So let's just look at the Jira board. It contains nothing. Once I click the save button, I get the ID and the key back from Jira. I get the issue type and the status. So if I look in my Jira board, I'll notice that this is actually the status that this, that this issue has. So I can go ahead and close this and I can see that it's actually in my uh, issue overview. Now, if I go ahead and move this to let's say in progress and I might even change the description of the issue to something different, we'll notice that when we go back into Innovator, the description and status will automatically change. And so we have this two-way communication uh, set up. All right, guys, that is it for this demonstration. I hope you enjoyed it and want to learn more about Eras Innovator.